This is Twit. Network engineers will tell you that it's almost as important what tools they have in their bag as the knowledge that they keep in their heads. Which is why we're speaking with Rebecca Potter from FLIR, who has a device that I think IT folk are going to find indispensable. Rebecca, thank you very much for coming to talk to the Twite Riot. Thanks for having us. Now, FLIR, of course, if we hear FLIR, the very name tells us that it's, it's going to deal with infrared. It's forward-looking infrared. It was technology that was really pioneered by by FLIR, by, uh, I'd say, military applications, but has found its way down into consumer and enterprise use, specifically with the advent of Lepton. Tell me about this, this little teeny tiny chip that I'm seeing in front of me. Well, the Lepton camera is the camera FLIR developed a few years ago, and our goal was to miniaturize the technology much like the CMOS industry has miniaturized visible cameras for the smartphone industry. Um, so we did that, and uh, we've had pretty good success with it, and we've integrated it into a new product that we're here to talk about. All right. Now, when you say miniaturize this type of technology, what you mean is this is not a CMOS process. This is not a CCD process. This is a custom piece of silicon, something that only FLIR has. That's correct. Yeah, we have a, a specialized detector that we package um, with our technology. And um, we do a similar process to how you build a CMOS camera, but it is a separate sensor and a separate set of materials. Okay. And now FLIR, I, I have used your products in the past. In fact, I have a FLIR one that, that's fantastic. And it's, it's an interesting set of images and videos that I can pull up. But what makes it so difficult to do good IR? I have seen inexpensive products out there that say they do IR, but basically what they've done is they've taken a CCD or an existing CMOS element and they've removed the little filter, the IR right. cut filter that normally keeps IR from, from hitting the sensor. What is FLIR doing that those cheap products aren't? Well, what those products are doing is looking at near infrared which is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that's right next to visible light in the, um, in the wavelengths that it looks at. But our camera sees longer wavelengths, um, 7 to 14 micron wavelengths, which are closer to microwaves and you can't see with um, a visible camera or with your eye. Yeah. And, and that's the, the difference between near IR and emitted IR. So when I have, say, an IR flashlight, that could be reflected IR. I Correct. can illuminate an object with IR that's not coming from the object, which is interesting and sometimes it's useful, but... Most of the time, what I want is I want to see how hot an object okay. actually is. What is the actual IR being emitted from the object? Near IR can't do that. Correct, correct. And so our new product takes this lepton sensor and uh, integrates it into this package that attaches to your phone. Um, we have both an Android and an iOS version. And uh, as you can see, one of our features is a different uh, combination of um, meters that can read that surface temperature. So I can read the surface temperature of the table or uh, maybe the monitor here that you see uh, back in the back of the room. Oh, fantastic. It's a little bit warmer. Now, okay, so there's, there's a lot of data coming to us on this. So first of all, I'm getting a, a temperature readout. And because this is detecting emitted IR and not reflected IR, that is a, it's a much better well, sensor for determining how, how much heat is coming exactly. off an object. Exactly. So for users that want to take a look at uh, items that might be getting hot, electronics, that kind of thing, um, this provides them a new tool to do that. Oh, FLIR has done something else with this because, I mean, actually, Jammer B, if you go back to that image, we notice that, um, well, I can see the text on the screen. I shouldn't be able to see that. I, it should just be a pure blob of heat because IR is not going to differentiate between a, a black pixel and a white pixel. What's going on here? That's right. So what we've done is combined two sensors and I can do, turn that off and show you just what the yep, thermal there camera That's is That's what showing. I'm used to seeing. That's right. But what FLIR has patented is the blending of a visible image with a thermal image. And that's really useful when you're looking at something that also has written information like labels um, or text, and that comes through in our images with MSX. Oh, I, and that's that's a very interesting process, and actually, that greatly increases the utility of right. this unit because now it's not just heat blobs. I, I can I can associate those heat blobs with actual parts and pieces and devices in, say, my data center. That's right. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about the data center because, of course, this week at Enterprise Tech is an enterprise show. This this is sort of a, a way to get IR good IR technology into the hands of consumers, but I see this as an enterprise tool. Tell me a little bit about using something like this in a data center. What, what would having this in my tool bag give me the ability to do 
if I'm, say, an IT manager? Well, we have a lot of products that are higher end and can be purchased maybe single units for right. a, a whole data center. But what this allows is that because the price point is lower, multiple technicians can have this technology in their hands and everyone has their smartphone. So it allows more use of the technology, which is really great for diagnostics, for finding things that are running hot when they shouldn't be. Um, and, and we see that as a really powerful use case instead of one technician having them everybody in the team has one right and, and you know the obvious use case would be to see where the heat is coming from right. different equipment racks if you've got an entire room of course a, a higher end product would probably make that a little easier to do but again as you mentioned this this price point allows me to put it into the hands of more right. people which increases the possibility that i'll find an issue before it becomes a problem right it's a great diagnostic tool uh, uh, there, there was one use case that i uh, i had heard of a while back there was a technician who was playing around with the original FLIR one, not the Pro, and uh, he was looking in his data center just, just to show off, oh, look, there's heat blooms here, here, and here. And then he went up, and there were a bunch of power cables for their three-phase power, and he noticed that one was running considerably hotter than the others. Uh, and he was able to diagnose what would have become a catastrophic power failure just because he had a sensitive enough sensor. It, it didn't look like an IR blob. It looked like two cool wires and one that was running incredibly hot. That's the sort of uh, well, utility that I don't think people can, can think of ahead of time. But once they have this product, that becomes commonplace. Yeah, I think it's very useful, especially for monitoring equipment over time. Because if something right. starts to change temperature, you can detect that and you can compare images over time. Um, I think that's got a great use case for maintenance that yeah. way. And of course, once you've got one of these for the, the data closet, you could always use it at home just to figure out could. where your heat is leaking out of it your house. No. Yep. Rebecca, thank you so very much. Now, of course, we got to talk a little bit about price points because sure. we don't want to shock the audience. I have seen high-end IR units that can go for tens of thousands of dollars. If someone wanted to get one of these modules to attach to their iPhone, to their Android device, how much is it going to set them back? Well, the Pro is coming out at a price point of three ninety nine, and we have a consumer model as well. It's a little bit lower um, in performance, and it's at one ninety nine. So it really makes it an achievable purchase for most consumers. Rebecca Potter from FLIR. If they wanted to find out more about the FLIR One, the FLIR One Pro, or what FLIR could do for them, where should they go? Um, all the information is on FLIR.com. Thank you very much. And that's FLIR. Now you can see clearly.